So your pelvis has three distinct layers that all open in a different way. There's not one movement that opens the entire pelvis. So deep squats are not gonna open every single level of your pelvis. There's not one labor position that's best for the duration of your labor. And you'll feel that during your labor as well. You're just kind of intuitively moved to create space within your pelvis. So in this video, we're gonna break down what the three pelvic levels are in different movement patterns to open each pelvic level that you can do during your labor to help create more space for your baby. Hey, for those of you that are new here, my name is Gina. I'm the founder of Mama Stay Fit, which is a perinatal fitness training company. And we also offer science-based childbirth education courses. Our mission is to help you feel empowered as you navigate the perinatal timeframe. So from your pregnancy to your birth and beyond, so we want you to be able to move your body confidently and be armed with all of the knowledge to make informed decisions throughout your entire perinatal journey. So the pelvis has three levels. The top part here is the inlet. This is where baby's gonna first enter or engage into the pelvis. The top level of the pelvis is gonna be open more with external rotation of the femurs or knees out, ankles in. This is gonna create more space side to side in the top of the pelvis. In addition, we wanna move this sacral promontory out of the way, which is the junction between our lumbar spine and our sacrum. And so a posterior pelvic tilt or tucking the butt underneath is gonna move this bone junction right here backwards to create more space front to back in the front of our pelvis. In addition, an anterior pelvic tilt, so tilting the pelvis forward, is going to change the angle of this pubic bone to make it easier for baby to enter into the pelvis. So movement patterns that tend to open the top part of the pelvis are going to be external rotation of femurs or wide knees. A posterior pelvic tilt will create more space in that pelvic diameter from front to back but an anterior pelvic tilt is gonna change the pelvic angle to make it easier for baby to enter. So we tend to favor very like front to back type movement patterns when babies are trying to enter or engage into the top of the pelvis. And so you already may be thinking of some different types of movements that we can do to create more space here in the top part of the pelvis, such as rocking front to back, different type of pelvic tilting movements, or even deep squats. The next level of the pelvis is going to be the mid pelvis. And now this is going to be the bony structure that baby is going to be navigating through. This pelvic level is going to be open more with asymmetrical type movement patterns. So one leg is doing one thing while the other is doing something else. Now this pelvic level has two levels to itself. So we have the upper mid pelvis, which is gonna open similarly to the inlet of the pelvis. And then we have the lower mid pelvis that is gonna open more similarly to the outlet of the pelvis that we'll get to next. And so the upper mid pelvis is gonna be open more with external rotation of the femurs or open hip positions with abduction and an anterior pelvic tilt. So this pelvic half is essentially shifting forward and it's creating more space here to allow baby to begin their rotation into the pelvis. And so these are gonna be movements where the leg is moving away from midline. Now, the lower part of that is still opening with asymmetrical type movement patterns. And this is gonna be open more with internal rotation of the femurs with a posterior pelvic tilt, so tucking the butt underneath, and adduction, so bringing things towards midline. So we're gonna have more closed hip type positions that are gonna facilitate opening in the lower mid pelvis. The good news about the mid pelvis, as long as I'm shifting my weight from side to side, each pelvic level of the mid pelvis is gonna be opening. So when I shift my weight into one leg, I'm gonna have more opening in that lower mid pelvis, but then the opposite upper mid pelvis is gonna be opening and vice versa. So we don't necessarily need to hyper focus on upper versus lower mid pelvis because as long as we are shifting our weight from side to side, we are creating space throughout the mid pelvis, kind of rocking baby through. Now we may wanna focus on either upper or lower mid pelvis if we're having some issues during our labor, such as baby is OP, where the back of their head is towards the back of the pelvis, we can open upper mid pelvis to help create more space for them to rotate to then engage and enter into the pelvis. The other half would be is if you've been pushing for a long time and baby is rocking and rocking and rocking underneath this pubic bone, if we create more space in the lower mid pelvis, it creates more space for baby to finish their rotation under the pubic bone. So generally, we just want to create space throughout the entire mid pelvis by rocking from side to side, but if we're having an issue such as baby is trying to enter into the pelvis or baby is trying to exit the pelvis, then we may want to focus either on upper specifically or lower specifically. 
The final level of the pelvis is the pelvic outlet or the very bottom of the pelvis. This is where baby's gonna vacate the premise. And so we wanna think internal rotation of the femurs or knees in, ankles out to create more space from side to side by moving these two ischial tuberosity or sits bones further out. We also wanna ensure that there's space for the sacrum to move. So ideally not being flat on our back, we're having just like a little bit of space for the sacrum to move. Another thing to consider is lat engagement because sometimes help pull the sacrum backwards, which can also create some of that space. So the pelvis has three distinct layers that all open in a different way. The top of the pelvis or the pelvic inlet is gonna open more with external rotation of the femurs and lots of pelvic tilting from front to back. So movement patterns are gonna be very front to back rocking type motions. The middle of the pelvis or the mid pelvis is where baby's gonna be rotating. So we wanna think asymmetrical type movement patterns. So lots of like swaying from side to side. The bottom of the pelvis is a pelvic outlet. This is gonna open more with that internal rotation of the femur, so knees and ankles out. And then making sure that there's space for that sacrum to move is gonna help facilitate creation of space there. And so hopefully you have a better idea of how each pelvic level is opening and how all of those are probably gonna be different types of labor positions and movement patterns. And so if you want to understand what labor position to do to open each of these pelvic levels and to also understand how do you know where your baby is within the pelvis and what positions to do, join our childbirth education course. We break this down in way more depth to help you understand how to open the pelvis, what movements to do, and how to know where your baby is even within your pelvis so that you know what positions that you want to be doing. And the good news is, is we can do movements during our pregnancy to ensure that we can open each pelvic level. And we do that for you in our prenatal fitness programs. We integrate pelvic opening movements from the first week of our prenatal fitness program all the way to week 41. Hopefully you're still not pregnant then, but if you are, know that you're still doing a lot of really great stuff to help you prepare for your birth. We want to ensure that we have the movement capability to create space in each pelvic level, because that's going to help us prevent stalls and have an easier labor. So check out all of our online courses. They're linked down in our show notes. And make sure you subscribe to our channel so you get notified whenever we release new videos.